This reinforced concrete shelter has been designed to operate as a military command center during a crisis. Its design criteria must withstand aerial attack by different weapons, for which reason the sturdy concrete structures have been placed deep on the ground. The air needed for the entire shelter is drawn in through the intake air tower that extends to the surface. The purpose of the tower is to direct the air to the cooling tunnel deep underground, where all the shelter's heat producing equipment is cooled. At the lower end of the intake air tower is a thick reinforced concrete wall equipped with blast valves to protect the cooling tunnel. This wall is designed to withstand the dynamic blast wave load calculated for the shelter structures. The intake air first passes through the blast valves and the pre-filters behind the valves that remove the coarse impurities from the air. The supply fan units move the air through the shelter's cooling system condensers and then through the cooling radiators of the backup generators. The exhaust fan units finally remove the air through the exit blast valves situated at the other end of the cooling tunnel. In addition to blast protection, the ventilation of the actual shelter also requires the complete filtration of the air and sufficient overpressure so that toxic substances will not penetrate the shelter. The blast valves installed in the blast wall at both ends of the airflow tunnel, which is at the bottom of the intake and exhaust air towers, dictate the degree of protection for the airflow tunnel, and thus the whole shelter. Choosing a proper blast valve is, therefore, a key question when designing the shelter. As the pressure shock caused by an external explosion reaches the valve wall, the blast valve's disc lock closes within a millisecond and prevents the destructive blast impulse from entering the airflow tunnel. There are bag-like pre-filters behind the intake side's blast valves, which protect the airflow tunnel from coarse dust. The frames of the pre-filters and the filtration bags are made strong so that they withstand the overpressure impulse passing through the blast valve when it is closed. Because there can still be dust in the intake air, even after coarse filtration in the tunnel, the air is filtered a second time in the ventilation equipment when the shelter is in peacetime use or in the pre-filters of the ventilation unit in times of crisis. In this context, only the crisis time ventilation is inspected. After pre-filtration in the ventilation equipment, the airtight special ducts and gas-tight valves guide the air during the filtration period to the NBC filter. The NBC filter has been designed to remove all possible toxic substances from the air taken into the shelter. The mechanical particle filter in the upper part of the NBC filter first removes all solid and aerosol impurities from the air. The activated carbon filter in the lower part of the mechanical particle filter removes all toxic gases from the air. This may require the use of activated carbon in the NBC filter against a precisely determined threat because of the great cooling needs of the shelter's internal air and the expense caused by completely purifying the air, only the amount of air needed to maintain the overpressure of the shelter and the air quality is taken from the airflow tunnel into the shelter. The ventilation units, blower units, move the air to the shelter's air handling apparatus, which mixes it with the filtered air circulating in the shelter. The crisis command center can thus continue to function independent of external circumstances. The quality of the intake air can be continuously monitored using the shelter's fixed and portable gas detectors, whereby the decision to switch to filtration mode can be made in real time. The overpressure created in the shelter through bringing and treating the compensation air into the shelter gradually removes the used air from the shelter space. Part of the air to be removed is directed through the gas-tight valves regulating the overpressure to the lock room 
connected to the main entrance and through the blast valves of the blast locks in front of the lock room to the entrance tunnel which acts as an exhaust duct and from there to the outside. The air intake apertures of the shelter's intake and exhaust air towers as well as the opening of the entrance tunnel are the only parts of the command center visible on the surface. An attempt is made to improve the protection by rendering them as invisible as possible and by effectively camouflaging them.